Nearly a month has passed since Starship's fourth flight, but the excitement in the community remains sky high due to the spectacular visuals it delivered. Now the excitement has doubled as Musk just revealed the anticipated launch time for the next mission, which is incredibly close to the present date. Wow, how can they fly at such incredible speed? What's the mission goal? And what can we expect from this upcoming launch? Let's find out everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. Under a tweet featuring an animation of the Super Heavy booster being caught by the chopsticks, Musk declared, aiming to try this in late July. Look at this. Flight 2 followed Flight 1 after 212 days. Flight 3 followed Flight 2 after 117 days. And we waited 84 days for IFT-4. Isn't it incredible the rate of improvement? SpaceX is showing consistent progress with the time between launches decreasing. Honestly, Musk's tweet hints that the launch won't be earlier than late July. But I personally believe Flight 5 could very well happen by the end of July without necessarily extending into August. Anyway, that timeline is still incredible. Why so fast? SpaceX's ability to achieve such rapid progress can be attributed to one key factor experience. Remember the first Starship test flight in 2023? It caused significant damage to the launch pad, and they discovered many technical details that needed refining on the rocket itself. This required SpaceX to spend a lot of time fixing these issues, leading to a lengthy delay before the second flight, and now it's the upcoming Flight 5. They have become very proficient in preparing with the facilities, data collection and analysis, and technical adjustments on the rocket. And there's one crucial factor in SpaceX's launch timeline. FAA approval. In the past, the FAA has been perceived as a roadblock, with its complex and lengthy licensing processes causing delays and frustrations. The FAA is responsible for ensuring public safety during launches and re-establishing commercial space operations. In a Starship accident investigation, their role is to oversee the investigation and accept SpaceX's findings before issuing the next launch license. Remember, the FAA faced heavy criticism after the Boeing 737 MAX accidents, where 346 people lost their lives. At that time, the FAA was slammed for its oversight failures and flawed procedures, as well as a series of faulty engineering assumptions on Boeing's part and a lack of transparency from Boeing's management. In response, the FAA has been forced to overhaul its oversight process and implement stricter measures to regain public trust. But this approach doesn't fit with SpaceX's development roadmap for Starship. SpaceX's iterative approach relies on test flights where engineers learn what works and what doesn't, quickly fix it, and fly again. Crashes? They're part of the process. One, two, three crashes? No problem. They will always happen. For established companies that may have lost their engineering first mindset, oh yes, Boeing, the FAA is crucial to ensure safety issues don't slip through the cracks. However, for agile, engineering-driven companies like SpaceX, the FAA's processes can sometimes feel like a hindrance. Luckily, this time, SpaceX doesn't need a mishap investigation report for the FAA. They just need a launch approval. They might need to update their license based on changes in their launch plans. But these updates should be processed quickly without causing major delays like a full investigation would. At least, it seems like the FAA is actively improving its processes and making a genuine effort to strike a balance between safety and innovation. This is a positive development for both SpaceX and the commercial space industry as a whole. So, hopefully we'll witness what might be the most spectacular test flight ever of the 120-meter-tall Starship rocket very soon. That's because SpaceX is aiming to catch the Super Heavy booster for the first time, paving the way for more cost-effective Starship missions. Basically, what we'll see on Flight 5 will be similar to the events of the last Starship launch earlier this month, but we'll also have the chance to witness the most epic hug scene ever in real life. The goal is clear, but how will it happen? On the fourth flight, the booster landed in its designated spot. On Flight 5, Super Heavy Booster will take a step further, autonomously navigating its way back to the launch tower and docking with the chopsticks. Yes, everything will happen just like in the animation. Approximately three minutes after liftoff, the booster will separate from the upper stage and begin its descent. In this process, Two critical factors come into play, deceleration and navigation. These will be managed by two systems, grid fins and engines. In fact, 
both systems performed relatively well in the recent flight. There were no reported issues with the grid fins, and they remained intact when Booster 11 landed. Even though one engine failed, didn't significantly affect the landing process. We saw the booster make a splashdown right on target, just as planned. Another crucial aspect of Flight 5 is the flawless operation of the launch tower particularly the chopsticks mechanism. These giant arms need to open and close with high enough speed, perfectly synchronized with the booster's movements. The lower chopsticks must create a precise opening for the booster to enter, then close securely to hold and lower it. An intricate system called an actuator will ensure the booster's precise alignment, guiding it into the orbital launch mount. Finally, the Mechazilla arms will rotate and place the booster onto the launch mount completing this epic mission. Despite the successes, we can see there's still room for improvement after Flight 4. The ideal landing burn should last around 20 seconds. However, in the actual flight, the landing burn started at T plus 7 minutes 9 seconds, and the booster touched down at T plus 7 minutes 22 seconds. A mere 13 seconds later, the booster's speed at that moment appeared to be over 70 kilometers per H. This shorter burn, coupled with the booster's higher than expected speed at touchdown, has raised concerns about the booster's readiness for a chopstick landing. Additionally, on IFT-4, one engine failed to ignite during the landing, and a fire occurred when the booster was close to the water's surface have further fueled these doubts. More than that, SpaceX has a lot to prove in this fifth flight. For example, the booster's ability to hover. You know, SpaceX has never made a Super Heavy hover. Not with a full-size Super Heavy, with all 33 engines, no. But surprisingly, I don't worry that much. Because from the early days, I have witnessed that previous ship prototypes have shown promise. Remember Starhopper? The flying water tower that kick-started SpaceX's Starship Dreams, an SN5 and SN6, the early Starship prototypes that displayed impressive hovering capabilities, and even moved sideways. These vehicles, representing the upper stage of the full-stack Starship, shared the same stainless steel material, 9-meter diameter, methane fuel as the Super Heavy booster, and used the early versions of the same engine, Raptor. Hovering never seemed to be an issue on any of those test flights. So, the best case scenario is just like the animated simulation. The super heavy booster, suspended in midair, gracefully descending towards the launch tower, ready for a perfect landing and a historic embrace by the chopsticks arm. This is the dream scenario, the ultimate spectacle that SpaceX has been working towards. And it all comes down to Starship Flight 5. Elon Musk himself has put the odds of success at 50%. It's a high stakes gamble, but the potential rewards are immense. A successful booster catch would be a game changer for space exploration, paving the way for fully reusable rock and dramatically reducing launch costs. But what if the dream scenario doesn't unfold? Well, Musk has revealed their backup plan. And in this case, it's a controlled splashdown in the ocean. I am sure they have written software such that if anything is off nominal, it will automatically divert its course away from populated areas and safely plunge into the sea. And no matter what happens, that booster catch attempt is going to be a hell of a sight to see. But let's not deny this. The booster's soft landing on Flight 4 was almost perfect. That splashdown was so damn smooth. I'm not surprised they're ready to take the next big leap. And there's no need to worry. SpaceX has a wealth of experience with bringing back Falcon 9 boosters. They've successfully landed their Falcon 9 boosters a whopping 302 times, feet unmatched by any other company or organization. This vast experience will undoubtedly play a crucial role in their pursuit of booster recovery with Starship. Once they succeed in catching the booster, a new era of space exploration technology will open up. Save weight by ditching the landing legs. Save engineering on landing legs. Reduce failure points by not having them. Eliminate the need for landing pads and roads to them. Make recovery operations easier and then achieve rapid reuse. We are definitely approaching the level of sci-fi development, thanks to SpaceX. It's crazy to think that we're heading towards a future where very soon, we could have weekly or even daily launches of the largest and most powerful rocket in human history. Just thinking about Starship's fifth launch is enough to get anyone excited. S-29 and S-30 had static fire tests just a week apart, so S-30 is likely almost finished, with just some work left on the heat shield tiles. Wow, it won't be long now. What do you think? Are you confident the Mechazilla arms will catch the booster this time?